Saint Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in it with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and pours forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Do you, Christ? Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. I'm here to share something with you. Uh, this was presented to us. You need to, here, can you see it better? Not all of it, but There we go, maybe you can hear me too. This was presented to us at our first service this morning, and it is the Crop Walk banner. It says, we walk because they walk. Crop Walk and 2020, it gets changed every year, but we had the most participants in the crop walk in 2020. Even though it was a virtual walk, we had the most people who walked. And I'm sharing this as the children's sermon for a reason. Um, are any of you, and maybe not just the children out there, but are any of you feeling like sometimes um, you don't, there's a big problem and you're not able to do much about it. Does anybody, has anybody ever had one of those where there's big problems where they just don't feel like they're able to do much about it? Absolutely. Yeah, and I think when you're young, you feel like you can't do anything about it. But would everybody think that hunger is a big problem? I think it's a big problem. Around the world, there are many hungry people in Mechanicsburg, there are many hungry people. And I know we're not gonna cure hunger, but um, the crop walk and church world service and world <coughs> the World Hunger Appeal, the ELCA World Hunger Appeal, all of those do an incredible job of helping world hunger. And everybody can be a part of that with the crop walk. Now, I'm not gonna be able to see you, but Lori's gonna be able to see you. Raise your hand if you walked in the crop walk last year virtually. You could walk anywhere last year. We got a couple people on Zoom that walked, didn't we? Well, this banner's for you. You did a hard job. And uh, raise your hand, keep your hands up if you've walked in the past. And if you've helped serve, meal, serve the meal, serve uh, some of the food in the past, raise your hands because I bet there's an awful lot of you who have participated. And if you didn't do any of those other things, if you help sponsor somebody who walked. Now I bet we have a lot of the congregation raising their hands, right? What I want you to know this year, first of all, this is gonna be the 50th anniversary of the crop walk in Mechanicsburg. Uh, well, in uh, the West Shore, but I think it's always been right in Mechanicsburg. I, I think we actually recently made it West Shore. Um, but I want you to know that it's the 50th anniversary, <coughs> but I also want you to know that everybody, it doesn't matter what age you are, can participate in the crop walk. Many of you can walk 
It's on October 17th. Many of you will be able to walk and that's great. We'd love to have a great number of people from Mechanicsburg walking. Those of you who can't walk, if you can sponsor a walker, that's another great way to participate and help world hunger. And it doesn't matter how much you sponsor. If you can give $5, if you can give $100, it doesn't matter. It makes a difference in somebody's life and helps feed somebody who's hungry. And if you can't do either of those things, but you can make soup or you can make cookies or something for the crop walk, that's another way to participate or help clean up afterwards. We can always use people doing that. And if there is no other way that you can participate this coming year, there is one way that I know all of you can participate and it is the most important way. Everybody can pray that day for world hunger. You can pray that the hungry are fed. You can pray that there are compassionate people who care about feeding the hungry and making sure that they're not just fed for a day, but that they're taken care of. A lot of the work that the Hunger Appeal and Church World Service does is helping farmers improve their techniques, um, giving them things to start off with, good seed, fertilizer when it's needed, um, making sure they have the right tools and right training to be able to farm well, providing them with animals in some cases, and sometimes direct food. But all of those things go to helping world hunger. And the most important part we can do in any ministry is to pray for that ministry. And I'm going to count on each and every one of you to pray for those who are hungry in the world and pray for those who are making a difference in fighting world hunger, and especially on the 17th, 17th of October. So I hope all of you are able to join us uh, and participate that day in some way. Now on to uh, the sermon part for the day. In the gospel, well, in all the gospels, but especially in the gospel of Mark, we have some beautiful images of the kingdom of God. And today's lesson only has a few parables, a couple parables, but Jesus has a whole bunch of parables that he shares with the people of God to try to explain this mysterious kingdom that we can't quite see, we don't quite recognize, and that is so foreign in many ways to the way the world works, and yet is so vital and so important, and is what we rest our hope in. So when we're talking about the kingdom of God, I especially wanted to dwell on that first parable. It talks about how the, the seed is scattered, and we don't know how it works, but mysteriously um, crops come up, and first we have the beginning of the crop sprouting, and then the full head, and finally the harvest comes. But it's a mystery. Now in Jesus' time, it probably really was a complete mystery. And I know that there are botanists out there, and even students of basic biology, who can explain exactly what happens, and how each of those little tiny seeds contains the whole DNA of the plant, and as soon as it gets the nutrients that it needs and the water and the sunlight that it needs, that that plant is ready uh, to sprout, grow roots and stem and leaves and eventually fruits. I understand that we can explain it. And we can even explain how bulbs work, which I think is even more amazing in some ways. Um, I would say the kingdom of God is like a bulb because we see this thing that looks dead that we put in the ground and months later sometimes something grows out of it. And certainly weeks later after we plant it, something grows up and it's beautiful. But all of those things may not be technically a mystery anymore, but to me it's a mystery. And I bet to most of you, it is still a mystery. And even if it isn't a mystery, 
unless you're very good with plants, it is still amazing. When you put seeds into the ground or you plant bulbs into the ground and you let it go and you keep watering it, you keep making sure that it is sunlight and you wait and it appears to be dead. And then you wait a little longer. And if you're like me, you look at that seed packet again and you read the instructions and you think, okay, wait a minute. It's supposed to be two to five days. And now it's already been three days and I haven't seen anything. And then the fifth day comes and you think, nothing's happening, something went wrong. And finally, sometimes after the date they give you, you see the tiniest little thing coming up. And it's just coming up right through, uh, right through the dirt. And you can hardly make it out as a plant. And then in a few days, it grows up even bigger. Or even more mysterious for me is bulbs. Last year, when we were all on lockdown and we couldn't really go anywhere, we planted a bunch of bulbs. And my husband uh, tilled up the earth for us, got it all ready, and the girls and I planted bulbs and put rocks down around our house. And then we waited. And we waited. And when you look at a bulb, it looks like it's dead. Now I read on the internet that the whole plant, like it's like almost like a miniature plant is actually inside of there. Like the seed just has the DNA of the plant, but the bulb has like a whole plant down in there somehow. Um, and it's just ready to come out and it's dormant, but it looks dead. They look dead when I put them in the ground. They look dead weeks after I put them in the ground. And then finally, I saw something come up. And you know, just like the kingdom of God, it flourished and it bloomed and we had beautiful flowers last year. Then fall came. And sometimes in the midst of the kingdom of God, the kingdom that we see around us, the church and the people of God that we know, there are moments when it's like winter, where it seems like everything's kind of died out, where it doesn't seem like anything's really happening. And I know for myself, the plants died. I mean, you cut off the leaves, everything was dead. You couldn't tell that there was a bulb down in there. And then spring came and I kept waiting for the rains and I kept looking for things. And I kept thinking, is anything coming up? And now I only planted summer bulbs. I need to plant some spring ones because everybody else's daffodils were up and their tulips were up. And I kept thinking, well, I know mine are later, but aren't they going to start growing sometime? But I want you to know I was out yesterday and not only are they tall, they are blooming. Not all of them. Some of them still just have buds on them, but many of them are already blooming. And it is glorious and beautiful to watch. And that's the kind of image that Jesus is going for. That mystery that is so spectacular and so amazing. And most of us, it is still miraculous when we see it. And we can't really describe what happens. I cannot describe how the kingdom of God happens either. What I can tell you, though, is Christ continues to share the word of God. We continue as the body of Christ to scatter the seed, the word of God, all over on good ground and on bad. And we often don't see anything coming out of it. We often don't see anything sprouting. And yet, when we look closely and we wait patiently, we start to see the very little bits of God's kingdom sprouting. We see a neighbor lovingly acting in kindness to another neighbor. We see somebody telling the truth when it's very hard to tell the truth and there's no benefit to them to really be honest. We see somebody praying with somebody else. 
We hear the results of somebody that's been prayed for on our prayer list. Or we see people forgiving one another. Or we hear the words of forgiveness. And each and every time we witness one of those things, we are witnessing that kingdom of God coming up just a little bit. You and I can't make it come up. You and I can't create the word of God. We can spread it and we can nurture those seeds when they do come up. When we start to sprout, we can give it water. We can help make sure that they're taken care of, but we can't cause them to grow. That is the work of God. But what we can do is we can witness to them. When we see those signs of the kingdom, when we see just the smallest bits of the kingdom of God, we can proclaim it. We can say clearly, this is the kingdom of God. And we can rejoice because there are many in the world who wouldn't see the kingdom of God if it weren't for the eyes of faith that you and I have. So I encourage you today, share God's kingdom when you see it. Rejoice in it. Let people know. You can't cause the kingdom of God to come, but you can be witnesses of it and you can help point it out to others so that they too might see and rejoice that God's everlasting and eternal kingdom is among us.